Good afternoon, and welcome to another Moment with Madison. James Madison, 4th President of the United States. I first met George Washington in 1779 when I was assigned to Continental Congress. He was 47 years old, tall, handsome, powerfully built. I was 28, small, timid in groups, and given to fits. Nonetheless, he and I worked extremely well together. He was a military man, experienced command and direction, whereas I was a politician. I knew how to convince people. He relied on me for advice. I knew law and politics and history and the classics. When he first became president, he turned to me to write many of his speeches. Indeed, I wrote his address to First Congress and then was called on by First Congress to write him a reply. <laughs> ah. But I am ahead of myself. I need not tell you of his exploits during the war. I suppose the most iconic story of this man is him standing on the parapets observing the enemy during the action at the Battle of Yorktown. An aide proposed that it was not wise for the general to so expose himself to enemy fire. Washington replied that the aide was welcome to step down if he feared for his life. <laughs> that was Washington. At the same time, he was a very stiff and formal and distant individual who often appeared cold to those he did not know well. I remember one time him walking into a room where his nieces were playing. They were so startled they just froze and he was so flustered he just turned around and walked out. However, when we were together, he and I and maybe one or two other friends, he was just the opposite. He was relaxed, jovial, he could even tell a good joke. The war ended with the signing of the Treaty of Paris on September 3rd, 1783. As you know, there were calls for Washington to be crowned king. Instead, he was about to become, in the words of King George III, the greatest character of the age. On December 19, 1783, George Washington arrived in Annapolis, Maryland, where Congress was meeting. Precisely at noon on the 23rd, <clears throat> Washington took a designated seat in the assembly chamber, and his two aides sat down beside him. The three soldiers wore their blue and buff continental uniforms. The doors of the assembly room were open, and Maryland's governor and the members of the state legislature crowded into the room, along with the principal ladies and gentlemen of the city. Here I am, and you can probably recognize Thomas Jefferson. The President of Congress, Thomas Mifflin of Pennsylvania, began the proceedings. <clears throat> Sir, the United States in Congress assembled are prepared to receive your communication. Mr. President, Washington began, the great events on which my resignation depended having at last taken place, I have the honor of offering my sincere congratulations to Congress of presenting myself before them to surrender into their hands the trust committed to me and to claim the indulgence of retiring from the service of my country. Having now finished the work assigned to me, I retire from the great theater of action and bidding an affectionate farewell to this august body under whose orders I have so long acted, I here offer my commission and take my leave of all employments of public life. Private citizen George Washington mounted his horse and practically galloped the 47 miles from Annapolis back to his beloved Mount Vernon, arriving in time for Christmas. Giving up power is considered the most noble and virtuous of traditions, following in that of Cincinnatus, the great Roman general. He was given dictatorial powers in emergency and, upon victory, relinquished those powers and returned to his farm. This is how Washington wanted to be remembered. He wanted to return to his farm, bask in his past glories, and 
leave politics to someone else. He wanted to do nothing that would tarnish his reputation. I practically had to beg him to attend the Constitutional Convention in 1787. He thought it a dubious venture and did not want his name connected with something that might fail. I propose that the act of his returning to politics is even more noble than that of his departure from politics in the first place. And I so concur with King George that George Washington was indeed the greatest character of the age. <clears throat> God save great Washington, Virginia's warlike son, long to command. Save him from all the blows of how and all his foes, wherever her freedom flows. Save Washington. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a pleasure. I look forward to seeing you again in another Moment with Madison.